because I've been married before, so I can honestly say from my experience, hey man, is it worth it? No. I want guys to be as educated as possible. Every man should raise his son. I believe that. 100%. So I get your point of view, but I must disagree. And I'll tell you what. Are you dating to have sex or are you dating to get married? A lot of modern day women want you to be a traditional man while they absolve themselves of traditional feminine responsibilities. Remember, women love conditionally. Okay, that's the problem. Love is not conditional. <laughs> love is not a feeling. It's not an emotion. Love is a choice. It is not conditional. It is unconditional. Women look to you to be a leader, a provider, and a protector, but they won't make you a sandwich. With the numbers, it's very dangerous to get married. And the way you take people out in a society is not from the outside. You take people out, you implode empires from the inside. And one of the ways to do that is destroy the family. What's cracking, everybody? Money Smart Guy, Matt Zapali here, hailing to you from Dallas, Texas, and ending our Proverbs series We've unpacked a proverb every week for the last 30 weeks, now going to the 31st week, wrapping it up with Proverbs 31, which happens to be one of my very favorite proverbs because it talks to you about what to do with the wife that you should consider marrying. Not because she's hot on the outside, but because of the character that she possesses on the inside. We're gonna do something a little bit different for this proverb of unpacking this proverb 31. And uh, we're gonna reflect on what is being said out there by two major podcasts uh, dealing with men and relationships. One happens to be the Fresh and Fit podcast. We reacted to uh, last week where my CEO, mentor, and friend Patrick Bedeva was on their podcast. And uh, now the other podcast here being The Roommates, hosted by Hafiz. I haven't seen this. We're going to unpack this together. We're going to see this together. But we're also going to use it from the reflection and from the lens of how Proverbs chapter 31, which is, in my opinion, the guidebook to not only wealth, money, prosperity, but also relationships in your life. There's a manual here that I like to use because it's just more than just being a good person, which which I try to do. So to preface all this, when it comes to marriage, money, and relationships, I think I'm a little ahead of some of the opinions out there in the marketplace on YouTube because I've been married, I've been divorced. I know what life is like when running game, two, three, four girlfriends at the top. I know what that's like. And by the way, you're probably gonna judge me right now. You're gonna patrol me in the comment section. I expect it. But I always expect the young man that's out there is 24, 25, 26 year old, the 24, 25 year old version of me that's out there is watching this right. He's single, he's impressionable, doesn't really have to do with his money, doesn't know what to do with his relationships. How did you learn from Uncle Matt's mistakes? And so I'm talking to you right now. So let's take a look at this interview here. Apparently uh, my team said this is a debate. Roommates, it's for marriage, fresh and fit, single, single, single. So let's take a look at this together. And so I want guys to be as educated as possible. Like Myron says, I don't want you to be, you know, simply eliminate risk and go your own way. I don't want you to simply ignore risk and just live in this dizzy channel fairy tale. I want you to minimize and mitigate the risk and to do everything in your power if you want to protect your 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 resources, all that stuff. But at the end of the day, to me, I just feel like every man should raise his son. I believe that. 100%. By the way, I like this guy already. I left the Marine Corps. It was my seventh year in the Marine Corps. The Marines told me I could not re-enlist unless I found somebody else to watch my son. I was going through a divorce at the time, spending all this money to gain custody. I got custody, and the Marines said, listen, put him back to your ex-wife because you need to deploy, and we're not going to re-enlist you unless you find somewhere for your son. I chose not the Marine Corps. I didn't choose my brothers as much as I loved wearing the uniform. I was in two combat deployments, three total deployments. I chose my son because I wanted to make sure that I was able to give my son something I never had, which is a involved father that had conversation with him, that had conflict with him, that groomed him to make sure he was, can attack this world and make a name for himself. And by the way, my father was in my life, but wasn't necessarily a very communicative Father, typical Filipino father, strong. The only way he opens up his mouth is when you're doing something wrong, not necessarily on the wisdom side of things. Right, love my father, love what he did in my life, but there was no, hey, this is the birds and the bees. Hey, you might wanna watch out for this. Hey, you might wanna take advantage of this. Very, I can't remember one or two conversations put together simultaneously in my upbringing that would help me make better decisions in my life. In fact, that was my mother. My mother was always a praying mother. That being said, I never listened to my mother much. I just did my thing. So now I got this mom, I got this mom. So love what this guy says about having a son being raised by his dad, correct 100%. I am so I sick and tired of I men agree. being raised by single mothers. By the way, I've, I've mentioned this in many different shorts too as well. Many different uh, IG reels, we talked about the problem today 
in our society is people think that it's okay to be a single parent. I, I'm not getting along with the other parents, so I'm just gonna be a single parent. And that sadly, the legal system is for them and it separates and divides family. And the way you take people out in a society is not from the outside, you take people out, you implode empires from the inside. And one of the ways to do that is destroy the family. Especially for the successful men, whether you call them high value, highly desirable, stuff like that, it's in your best interest. By the way, I don't believe in high value men, whatever, I believe in high character men. If you have high character, guess what's gonna happen anyway? You come through with your word, guess what's gonna happen anyway? You follow through with what you say, what's gonna happen anyway? You give your employer everything you got, guess what's gonna happen anyway? You give your business everything you got, guess what's gonna happen anyway? High value, because you start off with first, high character. Don't let your talent take you, don't let your value take you, where your character can keep you. It's in your best interest for you raising your children as well as eventually the headaches of dealing with these women. To me, it's like I personally wouldn't wanna be a guy who's 50 that's dealing with 25 year olds. I think that's crazy talk. By the way, yes, I've been invited to many parties and uh, next you know, these 50, 60, 70 year olds have these little 20 year olds coming to the party with them. I'm like, bro, you, you ain't trying to have a relationship with her, okay? I know it goes through a man's mind. There ain't no way a 60, 50, 60, 70 year old is gonna bring an 18, 19, 20, 25 year old girl to a party and everybody think that it's going to be a legitimate relationship. Now, I might be wrong, but all the guys know what that guy is after. And probably since more women are much more wise and advanced on this type of topic than most men, so do the ladies know what is actually going on. You're not fooling anybody. Eventually, the smart decision is to get to the point where you're like, you know what? I want to have a child. She's the best. She's the best woman. I want to go ahead and leave the game here. You want to make it, you know, uh, polygamous, whatever you want to do. It is what it is. But I believe that's extremely beneficial for most men. I think sometimes the messages for of marriage is not the most um, sustainable, especially if we want to create better men in society. I think a lot of people think that marriage is more so based on the legalization in, in the legal institution of marriage in the Western world. I believe that marriage is from a biblical faith-based perspective. And uh, sadly, the legalization of marriage and the law getting involved in what should happen when people get divorced, whatever the case may be, I think it's really trashed the institution of marriage. I don't think that the institution of marriage should be based on the legal definition, the law that's out there. I believe that the definition of marriage should be the biblical conversation because in my opinion, being married is not a contract that you can divorce and separate and move on. I believe that marriage is a covenant, not between you and your wife. It's actually a covenant between you and your wife, but more so specifically with your covenant with your creator your God, your Father in heaven. However, most people approach marriage, I think they leave God out the mix. They think so more about the legal aspect of the mix. For me, it's about your faith, the God, the creator, covenant relationship, not necessarily the contract relationship. And so I honor these guys and respect these guys for what they're doing. Um, I like to see how these guys play out also in the next 10, 15, 20 years when they have their own family, when they have their own kids. I like the way Hafiz is coming off right now. I think the way he's thinking right now is established on the right values and principles. Let's continue. There's a saying that goes, prevention is better than cure, right? So I get your point of view, but I must disagree. And mm -hmm. I'll tell you why. Think about this, right? You said earlier that the ideal situation would be to raise a child in a two-family household. And I agree. However, that's your opinion and your choice. But now, let's put it on the woman now. It's also our choice to say, hey, you know what? I'm tired of this. I'm out of here. I'm gone. That's true. Guess what? You chose to deal with a, a two-household family with, with your child, but she chose otherwise. So who has, who has the, the, the control there? One. And then secondly, look, I get it, right? In a perfect world, yes, you should marry a woman and be, and, and be with your children and live happily, happily ever after. But the current no state of, of the marketplace, the work. laws, the government, all that stuff, it enables some, especially a lot of women, to say, you know what? I have my fun here. I'm tired of it. Exit stage left. And I'm not saying that it's a, it's, it's a bad thing so they can exit. I'm just saying that like the chances of you staying together for a long period of time is very slim. And look, I've dated um, a lot of good girls. I've actually married a very, a very good girl as well. But at the same time, people change. So yeah, I can marry a woman today. It should be, she be a very good girl. Is he married? Is, is, okay. So he was married, he was divorced. Who knows what? You might have... I don't know if he had kids. You know, stopped going to the gym. You might have, you know what I'm saying, like, lost some money. You might have lost your job. Things might change. 
Remember, women love conditionally. So if they leave you on the condition that you're, you're providing these things and that stops, she can say, you know what? At this point, I've had enough. I'm out. Okay, that's the problem. Love is not conditional. <laughs> That's the challenge. See, it, see, when you base your love, if, if you go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13, okay, let's, let's, let's jump there real quick. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is a favorite scripture that is expressed in a lot of marriages because it establishes the basis and the foundation of what love is because love is not a feeling. It's not an emotion. Love is a choice. It is not conditional. It is unconditional. Let's check this out. Love is patient, love is kind, it does not envy, it does not boast, it is not proud, it does not dishonor others, it is not self-seeking, it is not easily angered, it keeps no record of wrongs. Love does not delight in evil, but rejoices with the truth. It always protects, always trusts, always hopes, and always perseveres. There is no condition when it comes to this. Love is just not a feeling. I think oftentimes people think that love and this and legalities, listen, it's a choice. It's a choice. It's a choice. And just as much as it's a choice for a woman to leave stage left or a man to leave stage left, it's also a choice to get together to begin with. So you got to figure that, that stuff out first. So to preface all this and worry about stage left, stage right, a couple things come to mind. Are you really choosing the right person or are you just feeling good about it? It's right for the moment. You're winging it. Ah, you know what? We'll just figure it out along the way. Wrong. So when you're looking at relationships in your life, let's take a look at Proverbs chapter 31 says, says about this. Verse 10, a wife of noble character who can find, she is far more worth than rubies. Her husband has full confidence in her and lacks nothing of value. Verse 12, she brings him good, not harm, all the days of her life. Let me stop right there. So does that mean you're going to find this stuff out? in the first three months, six months of dating? No. So the challenge though is to, are you dating to have sex or are you dating to get married? That's the question you have to ask yourself too as well. So going through these debates right now, if you pass it through the lens of what I consider scriptures, biblical wisdom of relationships and money and wealth, prosperity and happiness, it will help you do these based on wisdom that's transcended the test of humankind for at least the last 6,000 plus years versus what has been happening right now, trending in the world. Let's continue. I'm just saying we as men have a choice to make. We can choose to be single, be with somebody, get married, but look at the downsides, look at the upsides, and then wager between those two and make a calculated choice towards your life. Remember, this is this, this your life to live. You can live it however, however you want. I just know from my experience and from what, from what I've seen, I would look at both angles and say, you know what? Because I've been married before, and I've had a, a very, a very uh, good girl as well. So I can honestly say from my experience, hey, man, is it worth it? No. But like I said before, it's your choice. you got to weigh the pros and the cons. So <clears throat> fair enough. my take on this is I agree with a lot of what you said. Uh, for those that don't know, I came from a two-parent household. My parents are from Sudan. They came here in the 80s. They're still together to this day, uh, over 30 years. And, you know, my dad was a leader. Uh, my mom followed. My dad was the predominant breadwinner. Great context. Know, great context. My mom stayed at home. She cooked. She cleaned. You know, my mom, to this day, like if she, if my dad leaves without uh, her packing a lunch, she gets anxiety. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? She'll like drive or meet him halfway and give him his lunch or whatever. Like if she doesn't iron his clothes. So they, they have a routine and they've Very been honorable. doing Good. it for a while. Now, I think that's the best way by far. To have children like you need a strong male and you need a mother yep. period you need both you need the feminine and you need the master so th these guys are in the same show together right so he's actually disagreeing with his co-host uh was his name myron already here you see on even on the same show they're disagreeing with each other they're both co-hosts of the same show i could be wrong about this but that's just the way i perceive it right now because he was raised in a dual parent a household which is ideal and he even agrees that's the best way to raise a child and I'll tell you why it's the best way to raise a child. Because when mom and dad have an issue and they back each other up and they're based on the same values and principles and the same, they stand for the same thing and there's no conflict, they're not trying to get at each other, then the child wins. But when parents are divorced and parents here have to fight for parental rights instead of trying to raise the child and the child being the center of the discipline or the values and the principles of which the child is being raised upon. Now it's about manipulation, 
Who's getting them on the weekend? Who's going to pay for this? Who's going to pay for that? Who's going to get them during the holidays? Right? I did this. They see, you know, you know, the kids are with mom uh, all weekend or all week, whatever case. And if the dad gets three, four, five days, want to flip that around. They see, you know, these kids are like, which value system am I following? They're trying to figure this stuff out subconsciously. They're not trying to say, okay, I know exactly what's going on. No, their kids are trying to figure it out. Why? Because mom and dad are a mess. They're still trying to figure out their life. And so now who's paying for it? It's the child in the middle. And by the way, how do I know that? Because I've dealt with this with my own children. And that's why I'm doing my very best as a dad right now with adult kids to be not their friend, to be, the, to be a father, to be a consultant in their life, to show them my mistakes and why I say what I say. So therefore they can start continuing growing. Because what's the purpose of marriage? My purpose of marriage is to build a family, to build a last name, to build a legacy, to build generational wealth. I want to continue making sure that the Sapala last name is known throughout not only the Philippines, but throughout America, that it stands for something, that Sapala's are leaders. That's why I want to have a marriage. Now, if people don't want that in their life, that's not their outcome, right. Maybe the other guy is right. You don't get married. You don't have kids. You live a single life to each his own. The problem is that that cloth isn't made anymore with a lot of modern day women. A lot of modern day women want you to be a traditional man while they absolve themselves of traditional feminine responsibilities. Okay, okay, I get it now. So in other words, instead of keeping the standard, now we're reacting to how modern women are responding to men. Who's the leader here? The men lead, in my opinion. The men are leaders. So if modern women aren't doing this, well, maybe these modern women aren't for you. Maybe you have to work a little harder, a little bit deeper, to find a woman of noble character. Let's continue here in Proverbs chapter 31. She selects wool and flax and works with eager hands. She's not lazy. She gets to work. Verse 14, she is like merchant ships bringing her food from afar. 15, she gets up, but still at night. She provides food for her family and portions for her male servants. 16, she considers a field and buys it. Out of her earnings, she plants a vineyard. 17, she sets out about her work vigorously. Her arms are strong for her tasks. She sees that her trading is profitable and her lamp does not go out at night. It seems to me that women work. They put forth an effort to bring value and revenue to the household somehow, some way, whether it's actually through tangible currency and assets or is it the work that's what we call off the record, off the books that if you had to hire somebody to do it, you have to pay them to do the task that she was doing. So a modern woman should have all these things, in my opinion, because it's been something that women have done. And if women want to go out there and have their career, they want to have their business, they want to go out and, and climb the corporate ladder, amen. But is she also built and raised with character? It's one thing to be high value. Again, I said difference between value and character. And I hope that you consider selecting a woman of high character, not necessarily value, because those curves, the way she looks, eventually fades away. Same thing with two you men. The way you look, that six pack right now, you want to turn that into six figures, <laughs> seven figures, and using that same money to keep that six pack, okay? But nonetheless, is finding character in people, not necessarily external value or the superficiality of relationships. You are, you're basically, women look to you to be a leader, a provider, and a protector, but they won't make you a sandwich. You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, that's, that's, the, that's, that's, that's yeah. the truth. You know what I'm yeah. saying? So, even though I know, and the stats show it too, that two-parent households are critical to yes. a child's development well, just say, and growth. Just so you know, Sheena, I can't remember last time she cooked me a meal but she always makes sure her family is fed. So she may not make you a sandwich, but she'll also make sure that you're fed, that you're taken care of. She is always looking out for family. Even though she, I can't see Sheena uh, uh, with frying eggs or cooking rice, typical Filipino household, but she's always making sure our family's taken care of. There are so many minefields in the battlefield of marriage that I don't knock a guy for not getting into it. Now- Neither do I. I would say this because we brought in uh, Jen, our attorney, and they're and, both married, and they're both married, and they and we brought them in so that they can kind of talk about ways where how to get married without necessarily getting destroyed and things that you can keep. In mind. There, they're good. there, there it is. They're approaching 
marriage from the institution of the legal system, not necessarily the faith system, which I think the faith system is more important, but it's also important because now marriage is legalized in the legal system. So it is also very important for you to have both perspectives. And I want to say they're probably going to say something about prenups and postnups. In mind or whatever, Pre-ups. because I understand that a lot of men just do want to get married, and I think marriage is a beautiful thing, yeah. honestly. You know, but guys got to move in a certain way that, um, because the, the the problem is that the divorce laws haven't caught up to feminism. Mm-hmm. They're still rooted in like the 1950s. They were designed to basically punish men for going out and dealing with other women, and then leaving the woman by herself when she wasn't in the workplace or doesn't have any real skills. Mm -hmm. So, But the thing is that now women actually out-earn men in a lot of major cities. Mm -hmm. So the laws haven't caught up. And most women don't put themselves in a position where they're going to pay alimony anyway. Very rarely do it. 90% of alimony is paid by men. So with the numbers, it's very dangerous to get married. But I will say I agree with you that a married family is critical to a child's development uh, to, to become a somebody. You're basically going to mitigate a lot of issues that would arise if it was a single mom yeah. or being born out of wedlock or having separate homes or whatever it is. So what I say is this. If you are going to get married, do it in a way where you're involving the state in the lowest capacity mm-hmm. and still have that nuclear family household where you guys it. live together. Yeah. But, but try to have something counsel. in place that's going to protect you so that if she leaves... She's not rewarded for leaving. Yeah, and I think you make sure a either prenup or postnup removes the state from the decisions of when that couple decides to separate and go. I think that's wise. I think that's smart because it makes it because it exposes the true character of that marriage. Is she really marrying you for the money? Is he really marrying her for the money? It's going to be exposed in a prenup or postnup. So when you're having uh, conversations here about that person that you're going to marry, make sure it's also based on continued values. Let me wrap up this reaction video in Proverbs 31 as we continue to unpack and unfold what Proverbs 31 says about character. Verse 23, her husband is respected at the city gate where he takes his seat amongst the elders of the land. So men, are you king worthy? You claim king, but are you king worthy? Are you working? Are you not lazy? By the way, if you continue to read previous in these different Proverbs as we covered in many different weeks, King Solomon hates laziness. Basically, if you don't work, you don't eat. So if you're working, are you also king worthy? Because a wife of noble character has a husband that's worthy. And that doesn't mean that right now he's at that place in terms of sitting with the kings, but he's worthy eventually to be sitting and respected at the city gates. Verse 24, she makes linen garments and sells them and supplies the merchants with sashes. She's clothed with strength and dignity. Mm, Interesting how it shares here how women are clothed compared to how many women think they should be clothed today. She speaks with wisdom and faithful instruction is on her tongue. Okay, there it is. Sometimes men don't like dealing with their wives because they nag, 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 nag. By the way, I know that. I'm married. I know what it's like to have nag, nag, nag. And We all have to work on our communication, okay? Verse 27, she watches over the affairs of her household and does not eat the bread of idleness. Again, is she lazy? He's just, uh, you married her, she's hot, she's gorgeous, but she's sitting at home, wakes up at noon. Is she idle? And, And by the way, one of the worst places, in my opinion, in my history, to actually find a spouse, to find somebody that you want to marry, one of the worst places I found them is at the club, is the lounges. When you're drinking and alcohol is involved and drugs are involved. One of the worst places, why? Because you're not looking at character in people. You're looking at the external superficiality in their coverings. And then you get to know the character. And if that's where you met them to begin with, chances are that's what you're going to be fighting with in the future where they want to hang out when you and her or she and him have problems. Verse 28, her children arise and call her blessed. Her husband also praises her. Many women do noble things, but you surpass them all. Charm is deceptive and beauty is fleeting, but a woman who fears the Lord is to be praised. Honor her for all that her hands have done and let her works bring her praise at the city gate. By the way, just because this is about a wife of noble character, I also believe the flip side is also true. A man should also have these values and virtues and principles in his life. It just doesn't go for her. It goes both ways because now you got both people, husband, wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, come together based on the same what? Values and prison. So therefore, there's very little conflict. 
if they're based on the same values and principles. Now, if they have different values and different principles than you, then there's an area there of conflict. So you have to establish what your values and principles are and what you want to tolerate and what you're willing not to tolerate. What are your negotiables and what are your non-negotiables? So with that being said, I hope that you enjoyed this last unpacking of Proverbs, Proverbs chapter 31, reaction style to this. So you agree with me, you don't agree with me, please put it in the comment section below. Let's all learn from each other together. I am not the authority on this. I'm just sharing with you what I read in the Bible, what I've experienced in my own personal life. But I know there's a lot more smarter people out there because the wisdom of the crowd is always smarter than the person than the smartest person in the crowd. So I appreciate you guys. God bless you for watching these entire Proverbs 31 chapters. It's been a long 31 weeks, but I hope we all learned so much about what King Solomon is, who's considered the richest and wisest king who ever lived. So if you watch this video, you found value, please consider hitting a like. If you watch a couple of our other videos, if you're done, sorry, please consider hitting subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted the next time we upload our next episode. Before I let you go, there's a couple other reaction videos I want you to check out. And by the way, if you haven't picked up the Amazon bestseller, Faith Made Millionaire, bestseller in multiple categories, my first book ever. I appreciate every one of you that's purchased this book and have made it a bestseller on Amazon. I just put my thoughts, my experiences, my mistakes in this book, and hopefully it blesses your life too as well. It gets rid of some of the myths and misconceptions you have about money, and so therefore you can not latch on to your fear, you'll have more so your faith, you'll have to get you to where you want to go. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your Money Smart Guy, and until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be Money Smart today.